filling in for Rob Mario all week. You have to put up with me. We're doing something a little different this week. We're doing a couple of roundtables, talking topics that I think we don't talk enough about. This hour, um, I've decided to to poke the bear, if you will, and I. I want to talk race in West Virginia, and I want to talk race in in in, in America as a, as a whole. Uh, I know that it's weird coming from a white guy, but I think we need to have those conversations. And I've invited um, who I think uh, are people that are very knowledgeable about this and have a say about this. They're all very uh, involved in their communities with this. Um, joining me to my left is Board of Education, uh, Berkeley County, Damon Wright. Welcome, Damon. Oh, great to be here. And to my right is the uh, lead president of the Republican Club, Alonzo yes, Perry. Yes, Welcome, absolutely. Welcome, Alonzo. Thank you. And then um, on the phone, we have two uh, two gentlemen I just met this year, but I, uh, I respect them both, and I consider them both friends. Uh, welcome, uh, Delegate Caleb Hanna, who's also uh, a candidate for auditor. Welcome, Caleb. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. And Delegate Sean Hornbuckle, who is the Vice Chair of, or Vice Minority Leader, I believe. Welcome, Sean. Uh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate did it. I, did I get that uh, title correct? It'll, it'll, uh, minority Leader Pro Chair, but it'll, it'll work for you. There you go. And I will, I will tell you um, one thing. The, the both of them are very witty and, and, and uh, have really bright personalities, but one, one thing I do remember from Sean all year is every day during session he would come up with a different name of where the minority was meeting, um, it, it, whether it was the JFK Hall or the... Well, it was it was pretty brilliant, Sean, and, and, and that is something I would definitely remember for, for a long time, so... Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> so, obviously, I am... I cannot pretend to know what it's like to be a black man in, in America. Um, I am a minority. I, you know, I'm an immigrant, so a first-generation immigrant. I do not know what it's like to be a minority, but I can only speak for my experiences. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with Alonzo. We'll uh, bring up topics each, and we'll kind of just go around and chat about them. We've got an hour to do it. We'll probably take a break at 930, and uh, we won't solve all, solve all the world's problems, but we'll at least have a frank conversation of what we can do better and what we're doing good right now. So I'm going to let Lonzo kick it off. Well, I think the first thing, you know, uh, we should say is thanks, Mike, for, you know, having this conversation. Uh, I was a little worried we were all going to be in studio and that, like, we would need to appoint, like, a designated survivor yes. just in case, you know, something <laughs> had happened. But uh, you can't have, you know, this many influential black people in one area. I think that that's, you know. Um, but no, uh, first, uh, I think that, you know, just to kind of lubricate the conversation, I, I want to know personally from each of you, you know, what, is, what do you find to be the biggest issue in the black community? And um, I guess we could just open the floor there and see where. So let's go. start with, uh, let's start with Delicate Hornbuckle. And, and who was it speaking? That was Alonzo. Alonzo is with? Alonzo is the chair of the Republican Party in Berkeley gotcha. County. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, you know, I would say that I don't know if there is a quote-unquote biggest problem. Um, I think there are uh, definitely issues there, as they are with, within any community. And so I, I don't know if it's a, a biggest, uh, but there are a lot of, you know, uh, things that uh, definitely need some attention and take uh, all hands on deck to be able to, uh, you know, mitigate those issues. And, uh, Sean, you're from uh, Huntington, correct? You're, you're, you're in the city? Correct. Yes. And I'm sporting my Marshall Cup, just so you know. Beautiful place. As, as you should. <laughs> I was only down there for the first time about a month ago. Let's well, move on to. Uh, let's move on to Caleb. Your thoughts on Alonzo's yeah. question? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, and I have to agree with Hornbuckle just a little bit that uh, it's not just one issue, really. That's the biggest issue. There's quite a few. But if I just had to point something out, I would probably say uniting together. Um, Sticking together is probably one of our, our biggest things. I think that, you know, it's a good thing here that we have black conservatives and, and black Democrats on the call at the same time uh, to fight through some of those issues that we have here. But I think that we often get lumped together as a big group. And, uh, you know, we're very diverse ourselves. So. Okay. Damon, your thoughts on the initial 
because it, it is bigger than just one one issue right so mm -hmm. let's let's look specific. you can get specific if you want but um you can pick a topic but what do you see in in our community here in, in Martinsburg mm -hmm. that uh you think is the biggest issue because i don't think west virginia has any huge urban populations right we don't have a philadelphia we don't have a chicago we don't have um, mass shootings on every, you know, gang shootings and things like that. But we still do have issues with race in West Virginia, correct? Correct. I, I think, I think overall, as a nation, even as a country, the, the biggest issue to me uh, for the black community is being responsible for solving all the problems that you had no part in creating. Okay. So I think. Elaborate on that a little bit. Well, I think um, the poverty issue. The education issue, almost any issue where we are struggling in, most of the time it was caused by a policy, a law, um, implementation <clears throat> of the criminality of just being black. Um, those things carried throughout the years and are now and are still having an effect on what is occurring now. Um, I think that a big issue is a lot of the time we teach that things happened so long ago when actually they didn't. I mean, we, just in my parents' generation, it was integration. Yeah. <laughs> so it, but we teach, but we talk about it like it was the Civil War. Right. So, so, so yeah, so slavery was back in the Civil War, but we were still treating uh, people of color or people with a different skin color differently, what is it, 50 years ago, right? Well, we're, we're acting like now because we're getting closer to equality that everything is just fine and good and there's nothing that needs to be done to help the black community <clears throat> so i think we we're always looked at as so what is the solution why should i always be the one to solve a problem right. that others created why don't but they you should be it? part of the conversation we should be part of the conversation yeah. of course yeah but we shouldn't be the sole people to look at and say hey how are you going to fix the problem you, well, you didn't create it, but we want you to come up with all the solutions. But who, who's it. saying that, in, in your opinion? In my opinion, many in the white community are saying that. Just from the responses that I get when I speak, when the few times that we're able to speak um, collaboratively about race, right? it's generally turned back to having to solve all the issues. How are you going to fix it? And then no, no acknowledgement of how we got to where we are. And, and I'm going to, Sean and Caleb, you guys chirp in whenever you want. We'll, we, we do hear you, so it, it, it is like live, but I, I, will, I will say I'll this. I'll be honest with you. We, we, I can't, I don't know if it's just me, I can't really hear him fast when he's speaking. It's okay, very loud. I'll speak, okay, I'll speak louder. <laughs> Sorry about that. How's that, Caleb? That's Go much ahead. better, thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> so, so I will, I'll push back a little bit, Damon. Not, not push back, but say this. <clears throat> Wouldn't you find it more offensive if me, as a white guy, were telling you how to fix your problems as a black man? No, no, no. That's no. not what I meant. What I mean is, for example, since we don't really teach a lot of our history, here in America, we, we teach, in many cases, um, a partial history. Like, even if you Be talk specific. about... Well, even if you talk about slavery. Okay. We, don't, we teach slavery like they were slaves, not that we... We just now recently talking about we were enslaved. Mm -hmm. So that puts, just you, just that change in terminology takes the emphasis off of, like, many people say, oh, they, they, they were okay with that situation. No, they were enslaved. It happened to them. No, yeah, I don't think so it that's, was okay. Yeah. But our mentality over the years is that, that's not, that just by that change in words, it puts some accountability on the person that put forth these things. Jim Crow, we didn't create those laws. Mm hmm we didn't put those in effect. The redlining, we had no part in that. Well, and beast, you gotta gotta give me more detail. Well, okay, I'll, okay. Well, redlining, well, for, for example, what I'm that contributed is, is to the housing crisis. I'm not yeah. from here, yes, so I don't sorry. have as much of the yeah. the, the education and the American history as sorry. I do. As it, it, I, I'm sorry, redlining. I have yeah. no idea what okay. you're talking about. Sorry. Well, redlining specifically was there were home loans that people could get. Okay. But what the federal government did was they basically drew a line around black communities and devalued their their properties. Okay. And so there was a red line that basically separated those areas. So the red area were basically the minority populations and green was for everybody else. So the green areas got loans very easily. The red areas were denied loans. So here in West Virginia? Here, or here in the, the nation. In the, across the nation? <laughs> across the nation. Okay. So if you have a very difficult time getting a home loan and getting the funding you need, it's very hard to then 
lift, you know, to get out of the situation you're in. I mean, you can't move. You can't buy the place you're living now. Right. You can't move to someplace else because you're not allowed to get a loan or your value is devalued so much that you can't. It's, it's harder to move out. It's not impossible, but it makes it much more difficult. Which is why the, the smaller percentage are, are more <laughs> successful down the road or, or in college right. or, or in business or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. So there's, Alonzo? there's been a lot, you know, uh, covered from both <coughs> delegates that had uh, put their input in. And, I, I you know, th they said that we weren't a monolith first. Okay. And, and I, we obviously aren't. We definitely have multiple opinions and um, different views, different ways to see problems that are um, taking place. But I do believe that, you know, you can still say that there is a black community, that there is a, uh, a, a race of people that are black. That is, you know, <laughs> it's, I mean, so when we go back to the question of, you know, what's the biggest problem within our community, I would say it would be, you know, uh, family um our family structure being destroyed right like not having uh, a two-parent household um the 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 hard truths that have been associated with um you know us not being able to have a a full functional family so uh, uh before the 1960s and before a lot of the the things that you had talked about jim crow redlining um the family unit the uh, in black families was a roughly you know 20, 22% or 21%, you know, had their fathers absent. That today has been tripled. There's now 67% of black households and that are... What do you attribute are, that uh, to, Alonso? I would say it was the liberal welfare state. It was the, the programs and policies that were in place during the Great Society that had caused um, a lot of the fracturing inside of black families. And so um, when we do, I, I agree with Damon, when we talk about, you know, uh, there are laws and structures and systems that were, were put in place, but it's not a systemic problem. It is a, it, it was a problem that is born out of a, a culture that we absorbed that's not a part of ours, right? What system, what's... How is it not a systemic problem when it was the system that Im implemented the, the issue? Because it, it, it was a, a mindset. It is a mindset and a, a philosophy that caused uh, people to not only adopt this, but to also uh, almost manipulate individuals to support these actual policies and programs that uh, has led to the systematic failure. And what's happened is now people, when we look back at it, we have this mutilated view as if, oh, uh, unless... Basically, what I'm saying is, why are families fractured today more than before all of, uh, I guess, the end of slavery? How are families more destroyed today? Is it, is, was that period less racist than today? Because if so, then, I mean, we have a serious problem. I, I don't think that that's the case. I'll, I'll let the other answer. Uh, I'll, I'll say my Let's go to you, Sean. What, what's your uh, thoughts on that? Sam, repeat the question again, Mike. It was Alonzo's question. Why? Why do you think, um, in the in the black community, the amount of uh, fractured well, families is, I think, is how Alonzo put it. We can talk about father fa absence. Fa ab absent fathers has tripled in the last sixty gotcha. years. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm going to go at it like this, um, and I'm you know, be careful, but part of it is um, that you will see. And I'm not going to go down the whole rabbit hole of of uh, conservative, liberal. I think that's very dangerous, and those are all political talking points for anybody. Just to try to get in office, which is crazy when we're dealing with real issues, okay? Um, but, you know, you look back, there was a contingency of folks, and we all know the history of our politics in America when you had the Southern Dixiecrats, okay? And then there are the folks that changed to Republicans. So you, we, we can go back and forth from this whole party thing, but there are certain individuals that have led the charge, all right, and, and, and not, you know, upholding freedoms uh, uh, to Americans and prosperity for all. And you would have to point back. I mean, uh, uh, it was Anslinger, all right? He was the drug czar. In fact, we can go back 30s and 40s. And he was associating everything that was bad in the drug culture with black and brown folks, right? And so then you start through this trek through the 60s and the 70s. And then you get to the 80s. The 80s is really where it exploded, all right, uh, when you had people in office and in Congress uh, that were instituting these laws. And if any of you all know, uh, you know we'll go about one of them, uh, powder cocaine to crack cocaine. Now, 
I will tell you all, if you all didn't know this, uh, that cocaine is the rawest form of that drug. And if you have crack cocaine, you're actually watering it down, so to speak, because you're having to cut it with something else that is typically not a drug. Uh, so it's not even what cocaine is. And so how could it be that the laws and guidelines, you know, are exponentially higher for somebody that is holding one drug that is less potent? Well, I, I will tell you that that drug primarily was used by people who didn't have many means. And I would say a lot of poor white folks, all right, and a lot of black folks to sy systemic issues in this country who have been behind. And so once they did that and they started targeting certain communities, we can go through this history. Um, that's when you started to have the breakup. Now, I will be careful and say this. It's not always all on a law. It, ta it does take two to tango. Uh, but when the... the the deck is stacked against you, and you're living in these conditions, it leads to that. And so we all know through those laws there was a disproportionate amount of black and brown men that were incarcerated that led to um, a lot of these disparities with people being at home. Because, again, you know, we talk in, in, in these stylists, there are a lot of people that are, you know, are, are impacted by the justice system, but it's disproportionately black. You know, I, I heard whenever we got on, I forget who it was, it might have been Hornby, you know, talking about, uh, he said mass murders. Well, you know, statistics say, you know, there's not those mass murders coming from that demographic. You'd have to try another demographic where that would be true. Right. And we probably need to talk about that issue. But then he quickly pivoted to, I think it was, with gang violence. Well, you, you know, there is going to be sometimes elements of that, which I think none of us like. But then you're also, you know, cherry picking. Because if I look in my beautiful state, there have been a lot of instances of, you know, firearm issues that lead to death, whether it be mass shooting or somebody out in the holler, and but we're not equating that to the same thing. Uh, so I think it's just a lot of this jargon that we have around words. Uh, but get back to that original question, I would have to say that it was policies uh, that everyone had a hand in, okay, regardless of their party, uh, that led to uh, that breaking up of the home. And then again, like I said, it takes two to tango, uh, and, and then things are sort of spiraled. And right now what I'm seeing is there's not enough folks, reasonable thinking folks, to actually understand or care to truly understand what some of those underlying issues are, uh, which is sad because of poor political posturing, but just actually do something about it. It's not that hard. You, you know, you, you, you look for the justice system, wrong is wrong, right is right, and you work to correct those issues, and then you start to slowly but surely uh, get on a better path. Because, you know, I hear time and time again, a rising tide lifts all boats. But it seems that in some of these issues, we are reluctant uh, uh, to, to make sure we raise that tide. So, Sean, I, I'll, I'll say this. The one thing that really, truly irritates me when, you, when, when we, since I've come to America, is we seem, we're, we're so focused on these boxes. You have to check a box. What are you, Asian, Pacific, uh, Hispanic, uh, South American? I, I don't feel, I don't equate to any of those boxes. There, there's no box that says white African American on there. So, but it seems like we as a society, no matter what you do, you have to check a box and you have to say who you are. And, and I look around the table here and I look at, you know, at the two of you, there's all shades of colors of uh, backgrounds and, and people that, that are here. Why do we seem to have to check the box all the time? Damon? Uh, we have to check the box because that's what was started from this beginning of this country. I right. mean, that, that's just the history. But I that mean, doesn't mean we have to continue it. Well, part of the reason to continue it is because... And I, I see both sides of, of checking and not checking. If we remove the box, then discrimination can occur and not be calculated. There's no way to, to know it. Because, for example, <clears throat> if, if we never check the boxes in our school systems, right now we have very few minorities at all in our school systems. And if we never check the box, and then I'm always going to keep hiring people that look like me and that I hang around with, so specifically then, then it's, in West then it's, Virginia, then it's you're never, there's never, well, yeah, even in West Virginia or just, it, I'm saying in, in any category, housing, schooling, whatever. If we stop checking boxes, we open the door for then discrimination to possibly escalate. So I see it with, with being unchecked, but I yeah. see the opposite in terms. Uh, I see how some people think, oh, if if we stop checking the boxes, then it won't matter. But there's there's plenty. My name alone, right. <laughs> there's not very many white demons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so if I put my name on a resume, okay. It's very, I mean, and that, there have been various 
studies done where the exact same resume just change the name and the person with an ethnic name does not get a call See, well I, I want to go back to a little bit of what Hornbuckle was saying and I'm sorry I kind of lost a lot of it because it feels like you know a, a year ago now but I mean uh, you blamed uh, and you can correct me if I'm in, or if I'm wrong you said that it was crack cocaine and and the charge uh, of you know a heavier charge was what caused a lot of the destruction of the black family correct no, he said, he said the difference. I, I believe he was, he was talking about the difference charge uh, I, of carrying yeah, cocaine was, versus... I didn't, say it was, I didn't say it was the. I gave you an example. Yeah. Oh, so that was an example, and we're not going to say that that's like root cause or um, anything of that nature. No. Is that, uh, I, I'm, uh, I misheard you. I, don't, I, don't, I, I never said that. I don't, know what yeah. you're, I don't know what you're implying. Okay. Well, moving on then. Yeah. So we'll talk about the the fixation on race then well i i think that you know when we sit here and and we isolate this one issue and we say that there's racism in in everything and we start to really you know uh try to concentrate and look for it and it's it's our priority i think that it oftentimes if you look hard enough for something then you're going to find some type of disparity right and i think that it's also it, it's 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 harmful in a way that you know uh just because there's a disparate impact, it doesn't mean that there is, you know, uh, racism or discrimination. And we have to be very, you know, uh, uh, constructive in how we view. I, I would agree, but here's, the, here's the, the pushback. Look throughout the American history. Well, part of it is we don't teach all of American history, even our school systems. We leave out a great deal. So here's my question. The kids can Look, barely read, Damon. <laughs> we well, can't teach it all. Well, I'm no, just no. Being honest. Well, okay, we can't teach it all. Yeah. But why are why is there the exclusion of minority participation and influence? That's the issue. See, because if you exclude it, then you are almost saying it doesn't matter. Yeah, fair point. So that so that throughout our it, throughout our history, not, the most what, what oh, no. Let me finish. Hang on. How many times do you hear people say what I learned in school was about Martin Luther King, uh, Rosa Parks? We, we barely have, and that's just black people. That's, I'm not talking about Hispanic, Native American. We don't teach those things. We, we don't teach about how Andrew Jackson d ignored the law and did the Trail of Tears. We don't really push how, that, how racist that was. We don't teach a lot of the, the, the way the laws were, were formed were based on race. But you can go back in history and in all over the world and, and teach everything, and, and there was some pretty... Terrible things that right. happen everywhere. But I'm speaking but of he, just here specifically here in America. Yeah. If we if we look at our laws and our policies, m many of them, I'm not going to say most, many, a great deal of them were based on race from the very beginning. So we can't ignore that and say, oh, that had nothing to do with it. It, it just just in the 60s, we still were passing laws to to try to but correct things the 60s and now we're in 2020 and right. we're trying to correct these things at at the same time but yeah Caleb your thoughts she's still on the phone Caleb yeah, still got I mean, you I'm, I'm still here and I feel I'm listening because I feel like I'm, I'm learning a lot here <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you and that's what I'll chime in and just tell you my background right now I mean I was raised by I was adopted into a white family and raised by white parents and um, I represent a district in the <laughs> in the West Virginia House. It's probably about 99% Caucasian. Uh, so, you know, I'll be honest with you, I haven't faced a lot of these issues that you guys are talking about. Um, I think that Hornbuckle hit on a pretty good issue that uh, earlier that we didn't really elaborate on, but I think it's a, a huge problem, and that's just the judicial system in itself and the way that um, that our sentencing structure works. I think that, you know, West Virginia itself crawled itself out of the judicial hellhole not too long ago. But, um, you know, across the country, and when it comes to systematic problems, I think that judicial system is our, is our focal point there. It should be our focal point. And I, I, would, I would say this really quick to my, to my good friend Caleb and to the <laughs> audience. Um, and again, and Caleb, he laughs because I mess with him. All, I, I love Caleb Hand for real, for real. And so the, the, the issue is that though, I will be frank here. It seems like that was a opportunity for I'm talking about why we don't get anywhere on this issue is a, it's a talking point. Talked about the judicial hellhole of West Virginia. Well, I will tell you that that just talked about money. 
Dad just talked about rich folks doing right, uh, rich folks. And that, that, that's all that we, you know, really. What do you mean by that, with, Sean? Well, that, oh, in tort reform, we didn't like look at like what I would call fair sentence, sentencing guidelines when it comes to like maybe criminal activity or things like that. We were talking about like litigation or, you know, we, we keep going back on uh, protecting our coal miners and things like that. And, and, and so that judicial hellhole was all about people sending money, spending money uh, in civil litigation for the most part. It wasn't well, about like criminal things. And what we've done is in certain areas, we have uh, increased uh, sentencing, which in some cases could be fair, I, I would say. In some other cases, they are not. And so I think and, and you were right in, in saying that I think a lot of it is in the judicial system, but I would have to disagree from the standpoint of when you were talking about judicial hellhole, that's a completely different object within the legal system. Well, I think that it still affected us, but I, I agree with you. I wasn't talking that's the main focal point. I think it definitely gotcha. affected uh, th this conversation and helped. Gotcha. But I agree that sentencing is probably one of the biggest issues. Yeah, well, I think that. And I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, and, and so that's, you know, our just now back and forth is, in my opinion, a microcosm of how it should be. Okay, people coming from, you know, uh, potentially maybe two different backgrounds and two different party affiliations, which in my opinion, who cares? Um, but having a slight disagreement, but then coming around to we can still find something in there we can agree on move forward. And, and again, at the crux of this is there, there, there's too much of that. And so, you know, yeah, I don't, I can say it so I'm blue in the face. This issue, for whatever reason, has become a political hockey puck. It's really not. Right. It's like, it's like it's like just do right by people, and if that's not politically expedient to you, well, I'm sorry. Now I'm a person of faith who believes. Now maybe you just get to punch your ticket to heaven if you just do right by people. <laughs> that's if right. Worried about? I'm gonna cut you off there, Sean. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back okay. in about two minutes, all right? And we'll come. We'll we'll lead off with you, all right? Cool beans. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. We're gonna take a break, uh, Colin, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. We are gonna dive right into it. So I'm gonna let you lead off the topic, Sean, um, if you can hear us, and we will go from there. Take it away. Do you want me to lead off the topic? You're gonna lead off the topic or a question. Yeah, question for the group. Okay, this, all right, so I've got a, a topic that I would like to talk about. It is it is very dear and near to me, and again, for political reasons, uh, we, we never really make strides on this issue. Um, but I have always found that while these two events are mutually exclusive, and they can actually both happen at the same time, but they always get bogged down in political banner, and one side typically wins, is I would call the... We'll go back to that somewhat, the policing issue, criminal justice. I am a person who believes that I think that at a time right now, uh, you know, we do need to find more respect for that profession of law enforcement. I am somebody who has who has personally, all right, um, sponsored legislation to increase the pay of officers, uh, specifically state troopers, and I have worked hand-in-hand -hand with my local law enforcement to do things better uh, from a criminal justice perspective. But on the other hand, there has been literally years, years of documented and now captured on video of atrocities that have disproportionately happened to people of color. I want to know, why can't, why can't a logical person see that both of these areas need help and not veer away from people getting hurt all for political purposes. Caleb, we'll let you go first. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big issue there. It's a big one to tackle. Uh, no, I think that there's uh, pretty much everybody on this panel probably agrees with that assumption that, uh, you know, police, uh, we, we've all supported the police in some way, especially all the me, you, and Mike, of course, that we voted for the state trooper pay raise. We voted for the state police budget increases every year. Um, but I agree that there's 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 problems within the system there. Um, not really problems within the system, I guess I shouldn't say, but there's uh, there's always a few bad apples in the bunch. And uh, it, it's led to some really bad things. I mean, we have to figure out um, how we can better train and better prepare a lot of these officers. Um 
I, I, I don't know what the answer is there, but I, I'll agree with you on it. Alonzo? Yeah. So I appreciate you, that. Oh, hold on, Mike. I, okay. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm going to MC this one. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I appreciate that, Caleb, and I think you're right. Uh, and this is maybe for the next person, uh, Alonzo or Damon. Uh, but why is there that reluctance, though? You know, I'm always seeing that reluctance of, like I said, uh, Mike, Caleb, myself, we've all voted for Trooper Player Raiders. I'll do a 10 times out of 10 times. And they had a lot of issues going on. We very well know they were documented that they should have been called out for and reprimanded and had consequences. That's obvious. But I'm still think that their profession deserves more, and I don't let a quote unquote bad apple stand in the way of that. But again, in the same token, why are we reluctant to to see the other side of that that they does have merit and something needs to be done, and, and, and we just drag our feet on actually helping out the people side of this issue? Well, I don't think we're reluctant, but but I mean, what's well, your you, solution to the problem? What do we do? Exactly. Well, I, I, you, you was I was on board with you, Caleb. I wanted to hear the others. No, yeah, that's that's that. But that's exactly what I'm going to ask you. I mean, this is a yeah. fragile institution. So what are you? I mean, what are you proposing that we do to somehow? Oh, I you know, was Caleb. I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. I thought that was Caleb. No, that's Alonzo. I apologize. So no. So when it comes again, you know, I, I'll walk back down history. The disproportionate sentence guideline. Those things should have been one to one from the jump. Now going forward, all right. We probably need to be talking about um, uh, what's it, what is it the uh, what, the, the immunity, all right? The you immunity. want to remove so, qualified immunity? Excuse me. You're saying you want to remove qualified immunity? I said we need to do something about it. There you go doing that political thing again. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. asking. That's a question. No, no, you're, no, you're putting words in my mouth, sir. We're not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> Step one. Number two, we do need to address it because there is no way. That a man, all right. I don't care if you're white, black, purple, or brown. When you encounter what a, what my good friend Kevin Landon says, a bad apple gets, we'll just say, maimed, murdered, or something like that in broad daylight, and they are a murderer. There's no way that they should ever not be held accountable. It's no way ever they should just be able to move freely through another department. Those are the issues that we need to be actually taking action on. But I, I'm afraid that some people feel as if they do take actual a action, then they won't get their pack checked. So, Sean, uh, there, there are officers that are uh, that there's consequences and actions yeah. taken, especially legal action, if they kill or maim someone. It's a fallacy that you're you're, you're sitting here and you're saying that uh, we should do something about qualified immunity, something being whatever. I, I, I don't know, maybe just an, another rewrite or, or look at uh, you're saying that if there's any impropriety, people are moving around. Um, the departments. I mean, they, these aren't uh, concrete answers. Uh, no, they do do that. No, if you if you have a if you have all fouled the law in one department in West Virginia, you can go to another department and get a job. Are you saying that's inaccurate, sir? I'm trying to see what what scenario no, is, has is taken place at which was, that has that happened. What what place has that taken place? The, the question is that is that inaccurate? I asked him the question. I mean, is the, it inaccurate? Yes or no? Is that, is that it's inaccurate? About, yes or no? I don't know if that's happened, and that's why I'm asking you. If there's a scenario you can isolate. But you were pushing the narrative that you did do now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, not pushing a narrative of anything. What I'm doing is I'm yes, saying that it's, it's a fragile institution that we are looking at. And you don't understand, you know, when people are, are responding to, to these issues, I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, and, and you said it, thank, thankful for our law enforcement officers. But, you know, these guys are responding to evil on Day after day. Most people have never had to deal with the actual problems that some people in our community has caused. And these guys put their life on the line a lot of the times. And, and it's an institution that is, you know, uh, in, a, in a way that when you start to make these broad sweeping reforms, you disincentivize individuals from even joining the ranks which causes everyone to be less safe. So I think that's why there's a hesitancy. And that was your sure. question in the like in its origin. Let's let Damon not uh, chirp in. Yeah. He's been wanting to. Yeah, I, th I think there's a, there's a couple of things. Number one, it, you're, you're correct. They are dealing in some cases with people that are evil. But the problem is in many cases, and even in training, people that look like me are viewed as evil off the jump automatically. I'm viewed as evil just because of the way I look. And especially if I was maybe my father's height, 6'1 or something, and 200-some and pounds, then I'm definitely going to look like I'm evil regardless. So, so hold on. And, and, and the comment as to a few bad, ap a few bad apples, yes. But the, the finishing part of that is a few bad apples spoil the bunch. But the problem is we don't do enough to weed out the bad apples.
We, we, a lot of cops have come forward and tried to whistleblow. They have been reprimanded. The, the, the example um, the delegate gave, that happens all the time. When an officer does something in, in, incorrect here, they can go to another department quickly and get another job. They, and it's happened in many, many cases. If I tell you that you, and I, I tell other mm -hmm. kids like me, black children, mm -hmm. you are unsafe when you're around law enforcement, right? Do you know how damaging that is? Do you realize that that can deconstruct someone's ability to think rationally and put an officer in a bad place? And that's what corporate media has done. What's more damaging, done. being told but, that or, seeing, or having, ha having to view it yourself? But to actually see it happen. I think Which that one is more, more damaging? It's far more damaging when we have perpetuated rhetoric when and we see it people or when we just to act irrationally at traffic so, stops and put their lives in danger. Yes, I think that that's, there, there, that's, there, are, there is video evidence of people doing exactly what the officer told them to do and being and shot. Why? Because and being it's shot. Been perpetuated through through well, us. That's what I was going to ask. I, is I mean, I have a father-in-law. No, wait. I'm, I said I said people have been shot by the police for right. doing what the police told them to do. How is that? What's, what was perpetrated by that person in that car? No. It, That's what I'm asking. isolate a situation. Show me a scenario. What Name a, an event. I know we have many of events that have happened. Mm -hmm. You can't sit here. But, it's a case-by-case -case basis. And to say a broad thing, when what happens when they get shot? No. That's worse than the... No. no Give I, me a specific, a specific <laughs> incident, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that incident. Okay. okay. I think his name yeah. is Philando Castile. Yeah, I think... Okay, or, or, Philando Castile was the absolute disaster. That officer should go to jail. Did the officer go to jail? I actually don't know As the details of the and that, uh, and, that's, Fidel Castro. And, and, and that happens a lot. And, and those officers so are not held accountable. Sure, I'm pretty sure you went to jail, though. Yeah. yeah. So let's not get too far. In the, as the white guy here, let me ask you this. And I see this, and, and you guys can just tell me I'm blatantly wrong if you if you want. But I see the media only portraying or only feeding the fire of this issue where. I don't see a lot of white guys getting beat up by police officers, but I know it happens in West Virginia a lot yeah. because we got a lot of white people in West rate. Virginia. At a disproportional it, rate. It, 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 it seems like to me that if a person of color is in the picture at all, the media wants to run with this and, and, and push that narrative right. and that, since, that all white people and, and all and police And most of the time I've grown up, yeah. you, you are correct, the media does have, have, have a big part in this, but it's not a recent thing. The media has a part in terms of making people like me seem like more likely to be a criminal. And, and so that gets in, everybody said, black or white, it doesn't matter. There have been many, many people that, they just did a, just a study with, with just some, some teachers looking at some students, four little students. They didn't realize those four students were actors. And they said, said I want you to put this, push this key every time you see something bad happen. Nothing bad happened. But they were actually tracking their eyes. Every teacher, even including the black ones, all looked at the black students, the black boy especially, to see what he was going to do. Had, and the students didn't do anything wrong. This was just a stu They didn't realize that they were just part of a study to see perception. And that happens a okay. lot. And, that, and, and that, that, a that's pushed by media in terms of our, our shows we watch, everything in many cases makes us seem like the, the perpetrator. There's also a study that shows that there's a, a lady that has scars on her face. They've put scars to show if there was some type of, uh, you know, um, discrimination against individuals that have facial, mm -hmm. you know, scars, right? But before she went into the interview, they went and removed the actual makeup that they used, but they didn't tell the individual. And so they go into the interview, and once they go in the interview, right, that person thought that they had these scars on their face. And so when they came back to speak to the people that did the survey, they said, oh, yeah, I was, you know, discriminated against. I could feel it. You know, uh, they made comments, remarks and stuff. And so by looking for the oppression that was taken away from that situation, their ideology, their their sense of victimhood is what caused them to be perceived in that manner. So there's plenty of studies. We okay. can play the so let me just ask this. Let thing. me ask this question. Go ahead. Throughout the United States history, how many laws were passed? That, that were specifically aimed to be detrimental to white people. I'm not sure what type of question I, 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 that you're I, trying no, to ask. I, I'm, asking what, the, I'm asking the question. What is detrimental? Detrimental, how, how in, terms you, how, of, yeah. detrimental in terms of your health, health outcomes, detrimental in terms of your incarceration, detrimental in terms of any area. But, but I, I, like I said, well, I think specifically, all, all laws, no, no. I know. said specifically for against white people. Not not just not just affects everybody. 
darn any. Well, all laws affect everybody. Yeah, all laws. No, no, no. no. I think throughout, throughout, I'm thinking throughout United States no history. No one passes a law to be intentionally hostile towards a, a, a group of people. Uh, laws affect you saying everyone. You're saying that's never laws happening? Laws affect everyone. And, I and asked you in the history of American history. You're telling me in American history today. that there have been no laws that have been passed to be specific for African Americans. I'm sure, I'm sure that there were what all law types now of laws still that, applies, that barred what Italians. Law now still or, applies well, here's, here's the thing. Right now, we tr- right, right, okay, so what I'm saying, right now we try to do we try to have new, race neutral laws, and and that and that's a good tr- thing to but try. What, what law is still in place? It's the implementation of the laws. What what if, if you if you specifically have specifically which law? I can't think of one right now, but what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll, I'll tell you. Right. No, but because, what I'm saying is the instance. I hear your argument. I, I hear your argument. Oh, but I'll, I'll come back that, tomorrow and I'll, I'll, I'll do a whole show about it yeah, uh, if you want me to. That's, it, it's I'm just hard for me to defend any the entire history of laws when I can't. <laughs> I wasn't asking. I that's, yeah. the, that's the thing. The reason I asked the question is because we look at, we, we, we look at the, how things are, but we, we, do, we refuse to teach how we got here. Because we, because the reason because the reason we don't do that is because it will make people feel bad. Do no, because you want a group of people to be no, in perpetual revolution. I don't know what you want. That's here's, this here's is, what, what this now, is the notion. You I'm going to ask you. One, I'm going to ask you one more people question. People of black descent to no. be Let each angry other at the history of America. You want them to hate our country. No, I do not. And and black really people are the, the most the, patriotic the, people the, in this country. The the origin of the this, most to to teach people that you have been in this perpetual system of laws. There's nothing. Your personal responsibility won't allow you to succeed. You taking ownership of the decisions you make and how you carry yourself. That's what we need to be talking about. That's what will heal individuals in the black community not telling them their this country was founded on the principles of stomping on your neck that is such a reductive way of looking at this country no, I, and I, that I, is how I, you're framing that this is, no you're putting now see you always put words in people that's not what i said at all i asked one simple question you asked that, i what, asked what uh, question uh, the question i asked was what laws specifically were against white people and well, there aren't well, and there well, were none um, and, and, and what i and and, and you're, but, you're, I, but I asked ahead. you the same question, like what law specifically that is in place right, right now, now is affecting only one one race, one color. One. Oh, there, 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 we got eight there, minutes. There isn't one. No, there, there, <laughs> isn't one, there isn't one specifically yeah. now, and, and that's fine. Hey, Mike, and it, it shouldn't hey, be Mike, that way. Let, I'll go to Sean. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Are, I'm confused now. You're, you're, you are your buddy. I'm confused. Are you a participant in this? Or are you just host? <laughs> I'm a participant, Sean. I am a white African American, and I have a right to talk about race. He owns the show. You do. You do. And I own the station, Sean. <laughs> Okay, okay. Cause uh, it just seems that uh, uh, when my man Damon has some good points, it seems like you dusted off your cape and playing Superman. No, no, no. I, I just asked the questions because like, I like Damon. Let him answer. Yeah. Let him answer. Uh, uh, we have. No, no. He, he okay, said he'll okay, come okay, back okay. and give me a specific okay. law. Okay. No, there, okay. there isn't. No, okay. I said there, there isn't one specifically yeah. against right. black people now. Now, and, and I know in the past there has. I mean, uh, and I don't and, know. And that's the thing. I don't. I, we keep. I don't want us to continue to minimize. That the effects that it still has today, I, I keep telling people it's not that long ago. I mean, and, it's, it's it's not. And I get that, but we also have to accept some responsibility for today. Totally, that the people of today and, and people, Collins' age, who you know, he was born in what 1999. I, um, th- I got a question. Sure. I got a question. And, we got know, six I, minutes, so we got to let I'll people get answer. I'll get it out fast. I might <laughs> have a couple. The one, the one question I had, that, that name, Philando Castile, got bought up, all right? And it, it sounded like, and if I'm wrong, I do apologize, but it sounded like there was an agreement that that was a cold-blooded murder. And so I guess my question and is... And the officer was acquitted on all charges, by the way. Okay. And so my question is, if, if we are talking about, and we'll go back into the party mantras... And we'll talk about gun ownership, lawful gun ownership. I have a question for Alonzo. Why was a Philando Castile not your rallying cry? Why was he not the NRA or the Defense League's rallying cry when an uh, armed, lawful 
citizen of our great United States tells an officer that he does have a firearm and he is still gunned down. I just want to know why he wasn't the poster boy for the GOP like Kyle Rittenhouse was. And that's, that's all I because want. Because we're not trying to actually destabilize, destabilize the institutions. But, I mean, to sit here and say that that should be a rallying cry is Kyle just, I mean, that is so... With, with the judicial it's, 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 you'll be destabilizing with the judicial system with Kyle Rittenhouse, too. So I just wanted to know what was the difference between, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse doing those things. And I'm not saying he was right or wrong. But there was this whole groundswell of folks uh, that you because there were people that were saying that that was an illegal authority. action. Okay, okay. So, so in so, Orlando, I mean, was legal and his firearm gun ownership. And I don't correct? think that anybody was in a, a defense of making sure that that law enforcement officer was acquitted. I don't think that there was a, a large swell of people I, I that said that that, that they should <laughs> rally around you, him. You didn't ask well, that. I mean, but you're saying that, that okay, well, well, well Kyle Rittenhouse, you you're saying we'll that, that, that the right one. enjoyed Kyle Rittenhouse, but, I mean, if they didn't support, actively support uh, the shooting of Philando Castile or, or the actions of that officer, then how is that an, an equivalence? The, hey, the listen, problem with no, Kyle just, Rittenhouse is that there was a divide on fair. the actual Alonzo. issue. And Alonzo. so, Alonzo. go ahead. Alonzo, I'm going to be fair. Because Democrats do this and Republicans do this, Tea Party, Mountain Party, right, far right wingers. But they, they sometimes people dance, and you're dancing right now. You're no, not you're the dancing question. because you're no, trying the, to the, equate the two question, things that aren't the same are, thing no, and no, try no, to no, put I'll, them in a political spin and question. to say that they are no, one of their a uh, another. All I did was ask the question, and you started talking about that they didn't defend something else. No, I said, why didn't you specifically, okay, as a party leader, all right, why didn't you specifically? And I just gave examples. I, and then I almost prefaced and say I could be right or wrong. I just said, why didn't they come? to support him. That was all, that was that was the question that was asked. It wasn't about what they didn't support. It was about why didn't they support him? Because he's the poster boy. And I'm With telling that, you that that situation, you compared <laughs> it to Kyle Rittenhouse. Is that not what you did? Uh, he asked why didn't they come to support Philando Castile's right to no. own a weapon and, and, and not to be shot down. I think that people yeah. have supported his right Why didn't they support him? No, no, not who, who in no specific are you going right. to the NRA. come out Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen <laughs> that's such a we have to take a break and we'll come back to have your last final thought. You'll Ten seconds. Oh, well, you know, we have our Mountain Meat Smokers uh, political trivia night, uh, June 21st. There you go. Damon Wright. Uh, black history did not start at slavery. It started before that and is not separate from American or white history. Gotcha. Caleb Hanna. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. I just agree we all got to come together and not right. bicker so much as we did today. <laughs> and la last, last say goes to Delegate Sean Hongbuckle. Go for it, Sean. Hey, Mike, I appreciate the invite on the show. I appreciate everybody's perspective on here. Uh, it was tough, but we got through it. But I also would challenge us to do this off the air, not for the show. I love not it. Not for the cameras, uh, but to do it in a genuine way that's going to lead to a positive change for everybody. And with that, we'll see you in 22 hours. This is WRNR Martinsburg.